Okay, so here's the challenge. In one day, I need to 3D print and paint an entire game, including two armies. That was a challenge issued by Jeremy from Black Magic Craft, and I gladly accepted it. But there's one thing he doesn't know. I'm also going to make an entire game board as well. It's 12.05, Sunday morning, 24 hours from now. We're gonna stop, so we need to get started right now. The game is going to be Idols of Torment, and who better to talk about it than the man behind it, Jeremy from Black Magic Crafts. So hey man, how's it going? Too bad, you? Good, good. <laughs> I appreciate you uh, taking the time here to sit down with me and talk about the game that you've created. Yeah, uh, I appreciate you taking the time too, buddy. What led you to develop this game? I always just like wanted to make a game. It seemed like a really cool thing to do. You know, like when running like campaigns, RPG games is tough for scheduling. So me and my buddy just said like, why don't we just make a game we can play in between, you know, something like just two players, something that's like pick up and play. And at the same time, I had built some terrain that like had a really cool vibe and I just knew it needed to be a world and a setting. So we combined those two things. I took this aesthetic from this terrain and this concept of a two player game and we smashed it together and said, let's do it, let's make a game. And all of a sudden we now, what is it, a year and a half later, actually have a game created and done and yeah. That's impressive to, to pull it off. It's cool that you kind of incorporate a lot of the 3D printing into it too, right? Because it makes it accessible for people like me and everybody else out there who's watching that's got the like one, maybe two printers even, and just. Oh, like, I, I would have loved to be able to take all the models we made and make them in plastic, but it's the first game. I'm not a millionaire, so that's just not feasible. So we made some of the pieces, the core pieces yeah. in plastic, which was a huge accomplishment, but you can also 3D print them. Uh, and we wanted to have as many entry points as possible for people, like no barriers to entry. Like the way it works is there are the, the player models, there's official models that you can download and 3D print if you have access to that. If you don't have access to that and you still want the 3D like official models, they are available on, on only games. They'll print only it and games, mail yeah. it out. But if you don't want to spend that money, we officially in the rules made the games miniature agnostic. So if you want to take minis you already have just to play the game, that's awesome. Uh, what I really encourage is just making your own because like all the different orders, like the factions, they're they're pretty like neat in all their different themes. And there's a lot of inspiration points you can take there. So it's like, a, it's a really perfect game to kit bash. There's, there's a lot of room for that kind of creativity. Like yeah. it's, a, it's a good game for crafters. All roads lead to playing the game basically. Yeah. Well, that's a great idea. And just so everybody know, I guess I was just kind of, I reached out to your channel being like, hey, I need a little bit of a voice on what to do as a fellow Canadian YouTuber. And um, you were like, you hear about my game, Models of Torment? I'm like, yeah. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I could do something with that. And I kind of set up a little bit of a challenge for myself to see if I can go ahead and uh, print up everything that I need to run two players. <laughs> and try to do it in 24 hours and you are a bit We're uh... talking about barrier barrier to entry right like yeah. so i've removed all these barriers but one barrier i can't help anybody with is is time yeah so you still got that right you got limited time you got the job the wife the kids the family all this stuff but you want to play this new game well can you squeeze it into a weekend to to get ready. I'm hoping to see what I can, how big a dent I can put into this and like you said now, like a day or a weekend, see if I can really show people that, hey, like this is, you know, this is not as scary as it looks and is uh, not <laughs> yeah. as time consuming as it looks. So uh, I think that's exactly. what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna let the camera roll and, and see what I can manage to do here. Looking forward to it. Can't wait to get started here. Okay, well, good luck. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna need well, it. <laughs> later, see how you make out. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, man. Cheers. I set up a time lapse to keep me honest. This alarm clock is to add to my anxiety levels. Then I loaded my printers up with some Sunlu resin, both the Frozen and the Anticubic. First thing I gotta do here is load up some files on these two flash drives and get both of these printers moving. I'm gonna be printing miniatures from two orders, the hollow 
in the vial, each consisting of about nine miniatures each. I'm gonna be using Chi 2 Box Pro to slice up all my prints. You can see here, I loaded up the bed. This first print is gonna be about seven hours. In the second print here, I use my Photon, and this one is going to run a little over two hours. Loaded the files in the printer, hit print, and we got rolling. So here's the crazy part. It is almost one o'clock now, so I'm pretty much gonna stop and go to bed, which is why I started this so late in the night, is that these printers can get those first few prints off while I'm taking a nap, and I'm not gonna lose a whole bunch of hours. Anyway, let's get back at it in the morning. The next morning. <sighs> so uh, not too good. It's like 10 to 10. Um, a little bit of a late start this morning, has some other stuff to take care of, but we're out here now, we got the full day. First thing we're gonna do, check the prints on the Frozen, check the prints on the Anycubic, and cross our fingers that these are good. If these are good, we're off to a great start. If not, she's gonna be tough. Okay, the moment of truth. What are we working with here? Here we go, it looks to me like at least all the minis are there. I don't know if we got any fails, but at the moment, they look like they're all there. Another thing I like to do is I like to rub my finger along the bottom here to make sure nothing is stuck on the fat. Nothing really stuck on there. That's good, that means we're gonna be able to rip and roar on our next print, but let's top it up with a little bit of resin. That printer should be good to go. First mini out. Let's get the rest of these out of here now. Okay, let's see what the Anycubic did. How did you treat us? I like to wipe off a little bit of resin on the top of the build plate here before I take it out so it doesn't drip everywhere. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. We are definitely off to the races. Let's go. We do have our first little issue of the day. I can feel right here there's a little bit of something stuck on the fat. Right there. There's the culprit right there. A little piece. Just like that, problem solved. Full cage of minis, ready to wash. The first couple of prints worked out good. We're gonna prepare the next couple of prints. My Anycubic is overexposing a little bit, so I'm gonna drop down the exposure settings on that. I've got to print off a bunch of game tokens and the idols, which are like the little humans that are lost and damned in this hellscape of a game. So I'm gonna go ahead, prepare these files, get them on the printer, and cross my fingers, if these prints come out, we should be good on prints. It's just a matter of painting and building a game board. So uh, a ton of work left, and man, it's like 11 o'clock. So not a good start, but uh, we're gonna keep rolling. I got a few more prints rocking, and then it was time to make this hellscape of a game board. I used some quarter inch MDF, cut it down to the playable size of two feet by three feet. Then I used some cork board, to trace in some lava flows and crack that cork board up to give me some jagged edges. This is such a cool concept of a game board, I really need to make something dark and dirty for it. This is gonna be the game board from hell. The aesthetic is really cool, man. It's got that like dark horror setting, the heavy metal vibes. It's, it's really unique. I think that you've managed to get a really unique looking game that you don't get to see, so that's really cool. Yeah. It it's like, oh, you think you know grim dark? No, this is grim and dark. It's yeah. it's different. This is um, a lot more a human kind of darkness than like a futuristic sci-fi kind of darkness. And I really love like black metal aesthetics and artwork. And brought that all together. And yeah, it's it's uh, an all-encompassing vibe for sure. So the game board is actually ready for priming now, and then I'm gonna paint some minis, but unfortunately, the real world calls, and I gotta run off and take care of my real job for about an hour or so. So I think what I'll do um, 
It's 12.30, so I'll probably tack an hour on tonight and push till about one to make up the difference here. Oh well, it is what it is. A few moments later. And just like that, I'm back. We got these minis are finally dried off. I'm gonna go ahead and cure them now. I think I'm gonna try them for five minutes. We got the hollow curing here. We got the vial ready to cure next. We got some prints on the go. Let's take a sneak peek. We're always making cool stuff in the facility from terrain and miniatures and props and dioramas. So if that's something you like, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. I'd love to have you here. So I totally forgot about the bases. So what I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna print off some bases on my FDM printer. Dinner of champions here today. I made sure to take the time to properly clean any supports off the miniatures. And I based them on some popsicle sticks for now while my actual bases were printing. And although I was doing pretty good, it was at this point in the day where I did start to get a little bit worried if I was going to be able to do this in the time allowed. After all, that is a lot of miniatures to try to paint in one day. You know, it's all friendly, so if I, if I do it, I do it. If I don't, I don't. But I'll look forward I to mean, showing you my work at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, see what you get done, and then there's always next weekend, right? Like That's uh, right. To, to the people watching, you know, us YouTubers like to do these challenges and put them, ourselves in these little boxes. But in the real world, you usually don't have to do that. No. Nope. Just kind of motivates <laughs> you to see what you can, you know, get done if you put your mind to it. But you can always come back to it and... Yeah, going, that's right? right. But once it's done, though, I got to say I'm looking forward to getting it on the table, getting some games in. And uh, because I find a lot of times you got a group coming over for D&D &D or game night or something yeah. and half the people don't show up and you're sitting there. What can we do? Exactly. You know what, man? I got this ready to roll. Let's grab it and uh, throw it on the table. And, and like the idea of it, too, like unlike, say, Warhammer, where everybody collects their own thing and it's really competitive. This isn't so much a competitive game as it's just like is a, a fun game to play. And sort of like a board game where maybe it's just one guy, one person in the friends group has all the yeah. factions, all the order printed yeah. and all the stuff. And people come over and say, okay, let's play a game. I'm going to play this order uh, and I'm going to play this order. It's not like you're playing that one all the time because yeah, exactly. it's really fun to switch it up. And it is self-contained enough uh, in terms of a game and models that, you know, it's, it's realistic for people to have everything complete. And then their buddy maybe doesn't have to do that. They can exactly, just come over exactly. and play with your model. So yeah, that's the nice thing about a skirmish game. You don't have this huge yeah. investment. Like you can get a nice game on the table. You can play it in an hour or two. You know, it's not it's not just huge armies that are just you know exactly. months of work, right? Before I could start painting the miniatures, I did have to prime up this game board because it was going to take a couple hours for all this black paint to dry. And I knew if I was going to get this thing done, that this was going to be an important step. So while we were priming up the game table, this here print finished. From what I can tell in these supports, it looks like we're good. So that's not the only prints are done. Our bases are done and our tokens are almost done. Let's have a look here. One messed up, so we're down one. No big deal, a few minutes and it's printed. Rocking this printer here as well. All good. Golden on our bases. A few more to do, but we should get them. And sneak peek down here. This is our tokens. Looks like our initiative counters. I don't know if every one of them is printed, but it looks like a lot of them are. Uh, we're rocking the measurement tool, and so far so good. I'm gonna go ahead and wash these and remove the supports later because they're very delicate and my supports are pretty hardcore. This video is gonna be chaotic as hell, especially trying to edit this thing. We're gonna get a fan going on this here because I want this to dry off because we got a lot more painting to do. Hopefully this speeds the process. While they're drying, I got to do a few more things. I gotta slice up a few more bases and get them printing. And I gotta paint all these minis and do all these bases. Oh, I'm definitely, definitely behind where I want it to be. Yeah, I mean, it's 4.30. I'm like at least two hours behind. 
Now, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to paint these wonderfully detailed miniatures to the level that they deserve just because of time. So we're gonna go with the slap chop method and some speed paints, but it still should be a really fun paint scheme here. These guys are gonna get a ghost scheme and these are gonna get like fleshy monster tones. I'm excited to start. I'm uh, running out of time here. There's a lot of work to do, but uh, depending on how fast I can paint these, we should be in good hands. So I'm gonna take you in and show you the basic techniques of what I'm gonna use here. Once these things were primed up in black, I used some ash gray followed by white and I just lightly dry brushed on some highlights. And this was to create a nice texture to apply the speed paints over and hopefully if all went well, it would start to have like a ghostly appearance. Now, I did this in a few different colors. Necrotic flesh, gray, and black. Over the hollow miniatures, I used Purple Alchemy by Army Painter. And this speed paint worked really nice. It had like a purpley sort of ghost texture. Some of the other colors I used was like this dark wood and this pallid bone to pick out some of the details and a little bit of silver. These guys got a quick wash with the Crusader skin just to add that creepy undead sort of flesh tones to them. Okay, we're doing pretty good. It's 722. I've got one of the factions painted. Uh, these are the hollows. They're the easiest ones, they're like the ghost guys. Over here we got the Lost. They're washed, cured, ready to roll. Um, finally, over here we got all these printers are done. Base is done here, base is done down there. And finally we have the last print, which are the game tokens. I just checked these out. All 20 game tokens and the measurement thing, good. So with the last of the prints done, that means all the manufacturing is done for this project and it's just time to paint and there's a lot of painting left to go and an entire game board. Then I started painting up the vial and I used lots of different color combinations with these guys to give them a more varied look. This one went with the grim black. This one was mostly high lower blue. This is one of my favorite miniatures. This guy's really cool too. These whole things gave me like Stranger Thing vibes. I was really digging the aesthetic of these guys. Orc skin was used on this guy's cloak. And this guy as well. The organic nature of these particular minis suited these speed paints really well. And even though this is a very simple method, it achieved some really nice results for the amount of time it took. Now this guy, once he was dry, after the slaughter red, I did apply a grim black coat as well because it was just a little too bright for me. The last got hit with some flesh tones to speed up the process, and then a super fast dry brush of white all over, and a wash with flesh shade, and then I had to set these guys down to dry. Oh, it's about quarter after 10. I'm definitely getting pretty tired, but uh, I've got a lot to do. I've almost got the minis painted. I've got to take a break from it because my neck is killing me. I think I'll get the minis done. I'll definitely get the minis done. This game board needs a lot of painting, but luckily it's going to be a pretty quick technique. I'm going to take some brown spray paint. I'm just going to give it a dusting over here to add some brown to it. Maybe a couple of dry brushes. Uh, then I'm going to add some lava. So I don't know. We'll see how that goes. And hopefully, do those bases and then it'll all come together. Like I said, I'm gonna go till 1 a.m. because I missed about an hour due to work, but um, I don't know, it's gonna be tight. I'm gonna keep at it. Moving as quickly as possible, I started to make up all the scenic bases using corkboard. And there was quite a few of them and it took a little while to prime. Finally, I got to hit them with a little bit of brown. Then I moved on to the game board 
and started draw brushing up different shades of brown using some deco art paints. Then I had to use some caulking and acrylic paint to mix up a lava mix and I actually lost a lot of time here because I forgot that when this stuff dries, it dries in a darker shade than it looks when it's mixed. And I ended up mixing up a few batches before I was happy with what I had. It's 12 o'clock, so I'm into the one hour overtime. This is definitely not as red as I was hoping it would be, but I'm thinking it's gonna dry up and maybe turn a little redder. Um, basically, I wanted the texture here. So I'm hoping this dries up and then I was gonna go in with my airbrush with some orange and yellow to make that pop. Uh, let's see if I can do that or not, I doubt it. But let's set it here to dry. Mike just died, I'm back on the shotgun mic, that's why we got the echo. Let's see, I gotta dry brush the bases, paint the candles, these guys need a black wash, gotta finish the last here with their hair and their cloaks, gotta paint this totem, and I got to paint the tokens, and I don't know what we're gonna do with the game board, but let's see, let's go, one hour. Now I was really feeling the pinch here, and as fast as I could, I tried to paint up these last miniatures and paint up the tokens with a quick hit of spray paint. But as time went on, I finished up the candles and the buzzer sounded for the 24 hour mark. Okay, so that's it. Time is up and I'm pretty much done. What have I got left to do? Well, these guys here, flip these over, paint this side. We got to there's all our bases. Those bases aren't done. They need a little bit of dry brushing. The miniatures are all done. Both factions, all done. Here they are here. So they just got a glue on the base. And down here, drawing, we have the lava mat. You can see it's really starting to darken up. So what do you guys think? I think I'm gonna push it. I don't know if it's cheating, but Let's give it another 20 minutes, hey? Just so I can finish up. Catch you in a second. Thanks again to all my amazing Patreon members. You guys kick ass. Oh, it's 2.40. I needed about an extra hour and a half. If I wasn't so lazy, I would've got on the go a little earlier this morning and I probably would've did it in time. Still, all things considered, this was a pretty nuts idea and uh, I can't believe I pulled it off. Now, the paint jobs aren't gonna win any awards, but you know what? They're definitely tabletop standard. This lava, once I got the airbrush going, turned it really cool. Just an absolute ton of work. So I can't wait to call Jeremy up from Black Magic Craft, show him what I did and see his reaction because uh, I don't think he was too confident that I was going to pull this off, but hey, I did it. Okay, so, so the one day is how'd up. You make out? How'd you make out? <laughs> I made it pretty good. I got to say, I yeah. pushed it to 25 hours. <laughs> okay. I had to push it a little bit. Let me show you what I did here. Okay. Spin the camera around. I have around. no idea how much you did. Oh, I did a lot. <laughs> okay, so. Whoa. So check it out. Oh, you go, holy smokes, you, you got, uh, you did get a lot done. And you not only that. Orders and the lost, and the tokens. And the tokens Whoa, down you, here. You're ready to play. That's you awesome. See, this whole game board? Oh, don't tell me you made the board. I made the board too. Oh, that's mental. Yeah. That's crazy, uh, man. I, yeah. I was fully expecting you to like maybe have two of the orders printed and primed. <laughs> I, I, I really didn't expect you to get like the loss and all the tokens painted and, yeah. and then a board. And no a full less. board. That's crazy. It was absolute madness for the full, the full day was crazy. Yeah. That, Did that I know. everything print out okay? Yeah. Like, so. They did, so I'll tell you what I did, because I 
I just have so much experience at it. I'm like, I'm gonna, I pre-support, I supported them myself. Oh wow. Yeah, I went in and I supported them myself because okay. I know I, I put all like heavy yeah. supports. <laughs> if you know how to do it and you know what's working on your systems, that's awesome. This guy, I yeah. love this guy. Yeah, yeah, he's one of my favorite. Yeah. He, she, I don't know, one of my yep. favorites in the whole set. Like, like in, out of all 80 models or whatever it is, that's definitely one of my favorite ones. Yeah, and the, like the last, I went with flesh tones on these guys, and that's because um, I had flesh tone primer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they are humans. Yep. Um, like, they're souls, but like that could take any form, you know, you wanted. Um, yeah. And I like it too because it, like mine, my own personal set, the lost I painted you know, pretty white and gray. And then when I painted that, um, that order there, the, um, the, the hollow, when I painted the hollow, I painted them pretty similar to yours, mm -hmm. like that kind of bluish and white ghosty effect. And it looks good, but my lost and my hollow kind of are pretty similar yes. in tone. So they don't stand out from each other as much as I would like. So it looks good with the flesh tone like that. The, the lost are like such a, you know, important part of the game when you're like looking at the board state really quickly and to move them and stuff. Uh, mine, I love the way they look. In, actually, I got a setup going right here. Oh, nice. Really think, but, uh, I love the way they look, but they don't jump out on the, like, you got this gray wasteland and yeah. then you got these gray lost. Like, a few times I've considered actually making my real, like, playing in game set, painting the bases like neon yellow or something so that you can find you them. You can really see easily, them, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So the flesh tone is good for that. It'll stand out a lot. They, they pop on the board. You can see them. Like, you can see them from a good ways off. Well, I mean, it goes to show what you can get done in, in a day when you got, well, when you got some tech yeah, that's working and, for you. But, like, like, how much of that time was printing? That's only, you know, a, a small chunk of it. Or did you print ahead of time and then. What I did was yeah. I started the clock at midnight. And I hit print, yeah. went to bed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> got yeah, up yeah. in the morning. So essentially, all the painting and building and everything that was that was like 12, 12 hours. Yeah, that's that's all the like the serious work. Yeah, like, but like there's the no paintings. problem for somebody to grab um, grab one of the orders, grab a faction, and do it. Yeah. No problem in like you know one good Saturday, not a crazy Saturday, like a nice normal yeah, you Saturday. Have, you don't have to challenge yourself to no. do it like in a time crunch, but you can definitely pick one of them over a weekend and like at a normal pace and get it done. Yeah. And like, sure. that's the thing, each of them has nine models. So it's not like you're trying to do this huge point army. Like if you painted all the models, like all orders for the whole game, that's like one painting, one big Warhammer army. Yeah, exactly. Right? But then you have everything for the whole game and like stuff for other people to play with if you, I, I hope you get a chance to actually play a game with them at some point. I know, I know, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I know how that goes, though. Well, you know what? That's the challenge now with just running the channel and making hobbies and building stuff. Your time is just eat up and you're, yeah. it's a struggle to play now. Yeah, you have to, like, make it a video. <laughs> yeah. <to justify> it. <laughs> so, it was a pleasure, man, I got to say. I oh, that, enjoyed I'm it. Really, like, excited. I really, excited. I really didn't expect you to actually get that much done i had a feeling you might push it and like do more than i thought but i didn't expect you to do that much that's that's really rad really exciting thanks man yeah i kind of went nuts <laughs> yeah ah, go big or go home yeah be sure to stick around and check out some more awesome videos on my channel i've got them linked right here